What's happening, everybody? On today's show, it was a busy day on National Signing Day across the SEC. We're not done yet. we got more to go, but we'll update you with the latest class rankings. We'll give you some of yesterday's headlines, and we'll catch up on the latest transfers in and out of the SEC. Locked on SEC starts right now. Our Locked on SEC, your daily podcast on the Southeastern Conference. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. And what is happening, everybody? Welcome into Locked On SEC. It's great to have you guys along. Today's episode is brought to you by Sling TV. Don't miss this week's matchup between Mizzou and Wake Forest in the Gasparilla Bowl. Right here on Sling. Sling, the TV you love for a price you'll love. Try today. I'm Chris Gordy. Thanks for making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On SEC is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube and at LockedOnSEC.com. All right, let's jump into it. Plenty to discuss. Let's go around the conference. Boots out to the right. Makes the handoff. Around the conference. And we start with the SEC recruiting rankings after really day one of National Signing Day. The Alabama Crimson Tide, they're back on top of the recruiting rankings with an impressive six five-star signees. They could add a seventh today if they could swoop in and grab cornerback Desmond Ricks, who has been a big LSU lean. There are rumors Florida and Alabama lurking for him. He'll make his announcement later today. Alabama held on to Caleb Downs, the number one safety in the country, landed the number one edge rusher in the country in Keon Keeley, and flipped the number one offensive tackle nationally from Iowa in Caden Proctor. So Alabama doing work. The Georgia Bulldogs came at number two. They're the number one team in the country, reigning national champions. They are firmly entrenched as the number two team in the rankings with a few five stars, including cornerback A.J. Harris. Coming in behind them, don't look now, but remember when people said, eh, can Brian Kelly recruit at LSU? Is he a fit down there? Brian Kelly making some noise in the SEC. He already beat Nick Saban and won the SEC West in, in year one. Now he's putting together a top 10 recruiting class led by five-star offensive tackle Zalen Hurd. Let's see what LSU can do moving forward. Uh, Josh Heupel's top 10 class, that was led by five-star gem quarterback Nico Yamale. Ava, he is already on campus with the team going through their bowl practices as an early enrollee. I don't know if he'll start next year. It'll probably be Joe Melton, but Nico going to give him a run for his money, and fans are just can't wait to see Nico in action at some point next year. It was a uh, forgettable year one in the SEC for Billy Napier, going 6-7, and seven, getting crushed in their bowl game, but still put together a solid recruiting class so far. Gator fans want it to be higher, but it's a good start, highlighted by quarterback Jaden Rashada, they come in at number 12. So, so far, it's Bama 1, Georgia 2, LSU 6, Tennessee 10, Florida 12. How about the defending recruiting national champs? I kid. The Texas A&M Aggies, Jimbo Fisher, they are not going to repeat with the number one class this year, but they did do some work in the last few days getting several flips. And the big gem of this class, running back Ruben Owens, who they flipped from Louisville, uh, in recent weeks, he should play immediately. So the Aggies coming at number 14. Still some work to do. They can climb up these rankings with another addition or two. A Shane Beamer just continues to impress at South Carolina. He's getting it done in recruiting as well, coming in at number 16. This class led by O-lineman Marquis Anderson, linebacker Grayson Howard. Uh, speaking of flips, how about Hugh Freeze? Auburn Tigers coming in at number 19 in the rankings right now. It's top 20 class so far. For Hugh Freeze, unbelievable as they got top 24-7 cornerback Kyan Lee away from Ohio State and then the top 100 edge rusher Keldrick Falk away from Florida State. All that came a day after they landed the number four Juco offensive tackle in Xavier Miller. Auburn program had zero recruiting momentum under Brian Harson, you remember, but things seemed to be moving in an opposite direction with Hugh Freeze as the head coach. So hit the ground running, Hugh Freeze. Coming at number 21, Sam Pittman, the Arkansas Razorbacks. A nice signing day. But Hog fans, they're expecting more. They want to be ranked higher. This group is led by cornerback Jalen Braxton. Uh, Mississippi State, they come in at number 24. They're not listed in our graphic if you're watching on YouTube. But they did a good job saving this class despite really an impossible situation with the death of Mike Leach. New head coach Zach Arnett 
He's taken over the reins. Uh, one of the big guys he locked in in this class, quarterback Chris Parson. Parson told the Clarion Ledger, quote, we are literally the last class that Coach Le Leach ever recruited. We are the last guys that he wanted to join his program. We should wear that as a badge of honor. So really uh, just a tough situation. But Mississippi State really trying to uh, doing their best to regroup and, and move the program on. Um, while still play tri paying tribute to Coach Leach and a phenomenal memorial service they had earlier this week in Starkville. Uh, outside of the top 25, Mizzou, they are currently ranked 32nd overall. Kentucky comes in at 33. Ole Miss really fell yesterday with a couple of decommitments. They dropped to 36 in the 24-7 composite rankings, and Vanderbilt coming in at 50. Did not expect Ole Miss to be second to last. Again, things can change in the coming days. Recruiting, uh, early recruiting period not over yet. But some highlights from Wednesday. We start uh, over at Alabama. They got uh, the two big high school teammates, five stars James Smith and Quay Russo. Uh, they will continue to play together in the SEC on the ESPN2 ceremony. They uh, talked about their commitment to Alabama, and the Tide now have six prospects who are listed as five stars. Their class was already ranked number one before that announcement. So that just tells you how strong this class is. And another highlight, Alabama getting the signature from that big five-star offensive tackle, Caden Proctor, stealing him away from Iowa. He's a picture in our photo here on the YouTube uh, page. But uh, other guys who grabbed headlines, how about five-star defensive end Damon Wilson? He announced his commitment Wednesday afternoon. Uh, the elite edge rusher heading to Georgia, five-star recruit, number 13 player in the country, number two edge rusher. Uh, George also flipped three-star running back Kyron Jones away from NC State. He joins four-star Roderick Robinson as the only other running back in this class. And four-star corner Daniel Harris signed with George on Wednesday. He's the number 36 player in the country. Uh, Kamarian Pimpton had been committed to Vanderbilt since July. The tight end flipped to LSU on Wednesday. So LSU lost a defensive back to Oregon that they had committed, but they flipped Pimpton from Vanderbilt over to LSU. Pimpton is the third tight end to commit to LSU's class. You think Brian Kelly doesn't like his tight ends? Uh, they got three-star recruit Jackson McGowan and four-star recruit Matt Mac Markway. So, uh, yeah, they're going to be running a lot of tight end sets. And look, it, maybe Brian Kelly's looking at what George is running with Darnell Washington and Brock Bowers going, we want to do that. Not a bad thing to model. How about uh, at Auburn, Keldrick Falk, four-star edge rusher who's committed to Florida State. He flipped to Auburn. On Wednesday, six foot five, two hundred forty pounds, number ten defensive lineman in this class. Uh, he's both an Alabama, Mississippi All Star and selected to play in the All American Bowl. Tavian Gadson, who had been committed to Florida State, he switched gears yesterday, flipping to Kentucky. Six foot four, two hundred eighty pounds from Savannah, Georgia, rated the number sixty eight defensive lineman in the class. And Javit Brown, a four star linebacker out of Fort Lauderdale, he also signed with Kentucky. He was committed to Michigan State since November. Isaac Smith, the number 10 safety in the country, he picked Zach Arnett's Mississippi State over LSU and Texas AM. Uh, told rivals it came down to the final hours. So, congrats to the Bulldogs on that. Chance Johnson, a three star linebacker out of College Station, he will stay home and play for the Texas AM Aggies. He's the son of AM assistant strength coach Jerry Johnson, so that wasn't a shocker. Uh, Three-star running back Deshaun Bishop from Knoxville, Tennessee. He signed with the Vols Wednesday over Appalachian State. He's the number 84 running back in the country. Had a dominant high school career, secured two football awards for uh, rushing. And a linebacker, Jalen Ruth, he will be heading to Vanderbilt. Three-star from the state of Florida, committed to Vanderbilt. He flipped this commitment from Washington State. Defensive lineman Sam Williams committed to Missouri. Three-star defensive lineman decommitted from Wake Forest. He's headed to Mizzou. And um, other highlights from signing day. Jimbo Fisher taking some time to reflect on the current state of college football. Talking about NIL. He said, quote, the problem with all this is there's no consistency with the rules. And when you get into the portal, there's so much tampering going on. It's a joke. It's ridiculous. Kind of funny that Jimbo's the one saying that. He went on to say, uh, there is going to be another wave of transfers when the bowl games end. This thing is ever-changing. We'll continue adding the right guys. Fisher added that the things the head coaches have to deal with in college football has changed a lot in recent years. Uh, we also found out that uh, Jimbo hinted that, uh, he said, I just got so much on my plate. I don't know if I could keep calling plays moving forward. Yeah, I have to wonder if that was a directive from above. Hey, you're not going to call any plays anymore. You're going to hire a big OC to do that. 
or if Jimbo just really thinks it's time to stop doing that and have somebody else do it. Because, like you said, you're dealing with transfer portal, you're dealing with recruiting, you're dealing with re-recruiting your own guys. Uh, last thing on this uh, with the recruiting front, Hugh Freeze, uh, like we said, coming off a disappointing 5-7 and seven season, Auburn managed to pull out a top-20 recruiting class, bringing in eight f- four stars, and they got a chance to be uh, competitive in year one in the SEC West. So congrats to Hugh Freeze and all the Auburn fans out there. Thank you guys for making Locked on SEC your first listen every day. Coming up next, we're going to touch on the big transfers coming in and heading out. That all made their announcements this week. Uh, this episode of Locked on SEC is brought to you by our friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting information, stats, news, and analysis. You get the latest odds and trends for every pro and amateur league out there, from pro football to college bowl season to basketball, everything they got it for you at BetOnline.net. They are always the fastest and easiest way for you to get all of your sports betting information. You can just head to their website today. You can do so on your mobile device. That's what I do. I bookmark it. I go check betonline.net every day. They got different stories, different angles, and all kinds of stuff. They even got horse racing up there. Whatever it is you're looking to get into, betonline.net is your source. Head on over there today. It is betonline, and it is where the game starts. Start your game today over at betonline. Going along here, locked on SEC, and recapping a lot that happened with uh, recruiting. By the way, a uh, big recruit coming up later today, commitment of Desmond Ricks. Is he going to go to LSU? We'll update you on that tomorrow's show. Well, let's jump into it. we got plenty to discuss when it ta- comes to transfers. We're going to talk about the transfers heading out in a minute, but let's start with the guys heading into the SEC and we start with Graham Mertz officially headed to the Florida Gators. The former Wisconsin quarterback entered the transfer portal after four years on Wisconsin's roster. He announced on Wednesday he is committed to Florida. He will have two years of eligibility remainings, preseason Manning Award, Davey O'Brien Award, Johnny Unitas, watch list member. Um, he's had a very accomplished career. His best performance at Wisconsin came – October 9th against Northwestern, threw for 300 yards, five touchdowns. And he will join Florida recruit Jaden Rashado, signed with the Gators on Wednesday in the quarterback room, along with Jack Miller, who started the bowl game. Billy Napier got a pretty good group of guys to figure out who his replacement for Anthony Richardson will be. And you assume Jack Miller, Jaden Rashado, Graham Mertz, one of them will be starting for the Gators this year. If I had to put my money on it, I would say Graham Mertz isn't going there to not sit. Keep in mind, you know, I always compare LSU a year ago at this time. We thought Miles Brennan was going to be the starter, and then Jaden Daniels transfers in from Arizona State. Jaden Daniels wins that job. So uh, we'll see. You know, Graham Mertz, I would think, wouldn't be going there if he thought he wouldn't be starting, but crazier things have happened. Other notes going on around transferring, guys transferring in over at Tennessee, former BYU linebacker Keenan Peely. And now he is going to the Tennessee Vols. He's a Provo native, uh, Utah native. Had a nice season with BYU. Had 29 tackles and a sack. He's going to look to help that Vol defense that at times really needed some help. Uh, came into college as a three-star player. It's got a lot of proven leadership. He's a captain at BYU. So Keenan Peely, P-I-L-I, heading to Knoxville to help the Vols next year. Florida Gators, they are restocking up on defensive players. They really need to. uh, Defense lacking depth down the stretch this year, and they lose a lot of guys to the draft. But uh, defensive lineman from Memphis, Cameron Jackson, he announced he's heading to Florida. And then linebacker from Ohio State, Taraja Mitchell, both transferring in. Mitchell entered the portal a couple of weeks ago, was a starter and a team captain for Ohio State last year, uh, or last year, saw limited action during this past season, uh, was at Ohio State for five years, appeared in, in just uh, four games this season. Uh, and then Cameron Jackson, of course, uh, putting up some numbers over at Memphis. So two big pieces there for Florida to add to their defense. Sam Pittman over at Arkansas. He's getting a veteran defensive lineman transfer from Pitt. 
and John Morgan. He is committed to play at Arkansas. Six foot two, two hundred and sixty-five pounds. Finished his pit career with seventy-six tackles, fourteen and a half sacks, two forced fumbles. He uh, considered a bunch of schools from Missouri and Tennessee, Kentucky. He is heading to the Arkansas Razorbacks, John Morgan, and expect him to slide right in there on their defensive line. Vanderbilt getting some help. Clark Lee, a former Stanford edge rusher. Aeneas, Aeneas DeCosmo uh, announced on Twitter he is transferring to the Commodores. Six foot two, 251 pounds. Four years at Stanford, 26 tackles, one and a half sacks. Uh, on three sports had him as the number 37 edge player in the portal. Uh, entered his career as the nation's 32nd best defensive end, the number 12 player from the state of New Jersey. So uh, going to go help out Vanderbilt there next year, Aeneas DeCosmo. And there you have it. Those are the latest guys going into the portal. How about guys transferring out? Uh, Eric Gilbert highlighting this group. Georgia tight end transferred from LSU after a really good freshman year. He is on the move again. Eric Gilbert only played in three games this season, two catches, 16 yards, and a touchdown. Showed some promise in the G-Day game. I really thought he was going to make some moves this year. Two touchdown catches in the spring game. Pressed Kirby Smart and company. But uh, during the season, Gilbert saw limited action, and Kirby Smart kind of sidestepped every time he was asked about him. Uh, after he didn't dress for the final game, Smart said, we're trying to help him be the best person he can be on and off the field. So Gilbert LSU, freshman All-SEC team, started all eight games in which he played that year. So we'll see where Eric Gilbert ends up. But uh, already two SEC schools under his belt. We'll see where he goes now. Uh, Tyler Macon, quarterback at Mizzou, he entered the transfer portal after two years there. He has announced he is heading to Alcorn State or Alcorn State. However you said, uh, Macon appeared in three games, started once as a true freshman in 2021, recorded a rushing touchdown in 2022, played in three games, but did not attempt to pass. He was the number 34 first style quarterback in the class of 2021. So uh, best of luck to Tyler Macon. Going to go start there at Alcorn. Over at uh, Tennessee, Jordan Phillips spent a season there before entering the portal. He's going to head to the Big Ten to go play for Maryland. He announced on social media. It was a three-star recruit from the state of Florida. It's in the class of 2022. So Jordan Phillips to Maryland. Arkansas, they, they just keep seeing guys enter the portal for some reason. Offensive lineman Marcus Henderson this week announced he's going to enter the transfer portal. Redshirt sophomore listed as the backup center uh, heading into this Liberty Bowl. But the Memphis native is the 21st Arkansas player to enter the portal since August. Uh, to Misi... Adelaide, edge rusher from Texas A&M. He announced his commitment this week to Michigan State. So he is heading to Michigan State uh, transfer portal. Really taking a toll on the Aggies this season. They've lost over 20 players to the transfer portal so far after going 5-7. and seven. And a quick note, how about Emory Jones, former Florida quarterback who transferred to Arizona State this past year? He's on the move again. He's heading to Cincinnati. So he's going to get a fresh start with new head coach Scott Satterfield. At Cincinnati, by the way, going to the Big 12. So Emory Jones going to Cincinnati, but will play Big 12 teams next year. He's going to play Texas, maybe, Oklahoma, in their final year in the Big 12. We'll see. All right, there you have it. That is the latest news going on uh, with the transfer portal. When we come back, we'll discuss just some other news going on around the conference. We had recruiting. We had transfers in and out. Coming up next, it's a hodgepodge of just other news and notes from around the SEC. That's coming your way in just a sec. All right, roll along here, locked on SEC. And one more uh, transfer portal note. doesn't affect the SEC, but uh, Travis Hunter, who was the number one recruit in the country a year ago, cornerback. Went to go play for Deion Sanders at Jackson State. He announced he is heading to Colorado. So he's going to follow Deion up there to Jackson State. All right, let's jump back into it with some news going on around the conference because there's still a lot to discuss. But uh, let's head on up the road to Auburn, Alabama. Actually, formerly of Auburn, Alan Green, former Auburn AD, resigned earlier this year. 
He's changing SEC West schools. He's going over to Ole Miss. Green announced on Wednesday uh, that he is or was introduced at Ole Miss as their new senior deputy AD, external relations and business development. I don't know what all that means, but it's a reunion for Alan Green, who previously worked alongside AD Keith Carter in the Ole Miss Athletic Foundation from 09 to 2012. Uh, Green will serve as the Rebels' chief operating officer, overseeing the department's external operations and maintain sport oversight of the football program. Yeah, whatever that means. Uh, over at Kentucky, they're super excited about their big quarterback that they're adding, the number one ranked quarterback in the transfer portal, Devin Leary, heading to Lexington. And Mark Stoops talking with the media yesterday on signing day. Said he expects Devin Leary and Marcus Cox, offensive lineman coming in, uh, both recovering from season-ending injuries. He expects both of them to be ready to go for spring practice. Mark Stoops on landing. Devin Leary said it felt really good. I felt relieved. We felt confident that he was high on us, but he still had another visit. Said he respected Leary wanting to go through the process, but he said he's a dude. Very much you can see him being a great fit here. So the heir apparent now to Will Levis. Levis heading out. Devin Leary coming in. We'll see what the Kentucky offense looks like next year. Uh, Stoops did add that he believes Leary will seamlessly transition into the roster. And, uh, of course, bringing in Ray Davis, the running back from Vanderbilt. A couple new offensive linemen. And, presumably, Liam Cohen. Sounds like he's going to head back there as soon as the Rams season ends and he'll be their OC once again. So, good news on the horizon for Kentucky. All right, back to Auburn. Hey, Hugh Freeze is sticking with some familiar faces. As we know, he's bringing over some guys from the uh, from Liberty and all but confirming reports that uh, Liberty special teams coordinator and outside linebacker coach Tanner Burns will be adding added to their staff. Burns expected to fulfill an off-the-field role. Uh, was quality control assistant for Arkansas from 2014 to 2018. Had been in Liberty with Freeze ever since. Freeze took the vacant Auburn job in November, left Liberty, and a lot of guys followed him over. But, man, things have been looking up for Auburn. They made some big splashes in recruiting. They flipped Sylvester Smith from Tennessee, Kyan Lee from Ohio State. Really, really cool stuff there. And now one more note. You know, conference expansion is coming our way very soon. We know Texas and uh, Oklahoma are going to be heading to the SEC it's slated for 2025, but all signs are pointing this thing is going to happen in 2024. So next year, 2023, will be the last season of the SEC at 14 teams, it feels like. But Brent Venables, head coach at Oklahoma, talking on National Signing Day yesterday, he said that their impending move to the SEC has become a big advantage for them when it comes to recruiting. Oklahoma and Texas, we know, leaving the Big 12, coming to the SEC. Venables said it is an attractive thing. I think you choose a program because of the school, not the conference. But it's an and that you can put on a long list of ands for us. So when they're sitting in these recruits' rooms talking to them, some of these kids are going, hey, that's right. If we come there next year, you know, if I redshirt or whatever, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be part of your team when you guys go to the SEC eventually. Venable's using it as a selling point. wonder if Sark is using that in Austin, recruiting future Longhorns. Hey, no, we're going to be in the SEC very soon. Just thought that was a cool tidbit to throw back in there. By the way, Brent Venables, tr- got to sell him on something. Hey, how about the future SEC? Can't sell him on what Oklahoma did this year. Goodness, it was it was ugly. But, uh, yeah, kind of cool there. Hey, come play for us at Oklahoma. Hashtag, we're going to the SEC. Selling point for everybody. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of Locked on SEC. Thank you, guys. For making Locked On SEC your first listen every day. For your next listen, go check out the Locked On Sports Today podcast. The biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm Chris Gordy. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow right here on Locked On SEC.